Wow. Yep, that's, that's two five million damage shells, all right. Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome to a humble block of wood. In today's video, I am a little bit hungover at the moment, I haven't drank any alcohol for the last month, yay for me, and then last night I finally got to go out with some friends, and I am dying inside, so because of that, I am taking the words of my beloved aunt seriously, the only true hangover cure is explosions. So because of that, we are going to be working today on building a Doom Cram. Now this is something I've never really built before because honestly, I haven't done enough with crams lately. Just, I kind of forgot they existed for a while because I'm a dum-dum. And I absolutely love cram cannons, I think they're fantastic, they're oversized, they're silly, there's big explosions, there's big explosions, and there's big explosions. So, what exactly is a Doom Cram? Obviously this isn't a setup we're gonna stick with just to showcase how this all works. Let's put down some packers. So here we are, we have packed 16 out of 315, that's going to increase and increase. So what we have is the payload packers over here, attacked, attached rather to the payload compactors. The payload compactors increase just how many of these pellets we can put into our shell. So now I've added two more, we're now at 375. And as you can see, as I'm slowly packing in these tiny little explosive pellets, it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Right now it's at 1300 damage, and that's going to increase until it's fully packed. So the idea of a doom cram is going with this system is to have a really slowly reloading cram cannon that you fire maybe once per fight and you pack it with as many of these pellets as possible so you get loads and loads of damage so the new maximum now is 625 uh, let's make sure we're giving this thing resource. There we go, and that's going to keep on increasing. And I don't know if there's a limit, because again, I haven't really experimented with this. So what we want is a max gauge cram cannon with as many of these pellets as possible. And I'm going to build a boat around it, essentially the Doom Marauder. So, let's get to work. I'm trying to wrap my head around how I'm going to do the Tetris for this thing. It should be quite simple. Essentially, we have sections like this, so, so we want them interlocking as much as possible and just going all the way down the craft. Right? This really shows you how out, out of the loop I am with crams. Uh, don't take anything I do as the best advice or as perfectly correct. So yeah, we should actually try and ma make as many payload packers attached to as many of these as possible. Right? Since now connected packers is three, will that increase the capacity? Yes. Yes. Three, three, oh, oh. Three, four, oh. Okay. That was a weird way of saying those numbers. I just thought, if we are only going to use this once per fight, we don't really need all these explosive pellets, because all they do is increase the speed of which this thing gets packed. So realistically, we could swap them all out for those instead, and that will just increase our capacity. I'm also thinking that maybe high explosive isn't the way to go. Uh, maybe fragment and hardener, that way goes into the craft, explodes, and the fragments are going to do ridiculous amount of damage if they're all stacked up like this. Ridiculous amounts of damage. <laughs> Me can't talk, Brango melty melt. I think I'm slowly getting there. I do realise that looking up a guide right now would be very advantageous, but essentially what we're trying to do is have the packers have all three of their active sides used, and then these compactors have four packers attached to them. Compactors and packers are going to mess me up so much, but that's the goal. So each of these, yeah, attachments, three out of three, connected packers, four. Ideally, we're going to end up with a design which we can just copy and paste into itself, and that way we can just go on forever. Or at least that's the idea. Don't think I've got there just yet, but at least I'm getting the concept. Don't take this as the right way of doing things, because it ain't. That's gonna take a long time to load. Packed 200 out of 120,000. Now, this definitely isn't perfect, but it will do for now. We can make it a lot larger as well, but I want to test out this, because this, to me, is a feasible size. That's the thing. This could go in a craft which has other things attached to it. It's also not very expensive. It's like 30,000, which is surprising. Of course, it only fires once per fight, but still. Uh, if I just reload this, will it finish off, or am I actually going to have to wait around? Is there a way to insta-load this? There's gotta be a way to insta-load this. I mean, I could just non-permanently attach loads of these to speed things up, I guess. Yeah, I've been looking at my Tetris and realised I've done it completely wrong in the core, which has spilled out and caused problems all the way through, but, you know, again, 
it's workable. That's all I care about right now. If I ever use this properly, I will take some time to learn it properly. But for now, this will work. So uh, while it loads, because I have completely forgot if there is a way to insta-load it, I do need to build the rest of the craft anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. Just gave it a really basic PID so I can actually control this thing. So now I can turn it on the spot. Gave it a little mainframe so we can aim at things, and we're basically ready for our first test. It's very easy to get things to fly in from the depths. Even when it's just a giant gun. I love how much it throws the craft back at the moment, since it's not really um, a craft, but just a gun, so it's actually quite light. Oh, it's gonna go really not where I want it to. But there we go, it's gone inside, and a second... Woohoo! One million damage! That's more like it! <laughs> okay, let the smoke clear, and let's uh, see what it actually did. Oh my god! Uh... <laughs> That is wonderful! <laughs> oh, dearie me, you're missing your everything! It <laughs> was we'll split it in half! I like that. <laughs> I rather like that. But we can do better! Now testing fragments. After this, we can make a choice of how we're going to be building this gun as we make it bigger. I do feel like Fragment will probably scale better as we make this thing ridiculously big, but it's going to be hard to uh, convince me not to use explosives. Okay, went inside. Whoa! Wow, just bits kind of falling off everywhere there. A lot harder to see exactly what happened, but uh, let's have a look-see. So it went in... Where did it go in? Um, there, I think. There? I can't remember. Either way, let's have a look. Whoa, it's completely removed heavy armor near where the fragments were. Uh, it's gone through here, down there, around there. Sadly, not many in this direction, so it didn't take out any of the weapons. I did set the, uh, the angle to max. It's gone through there, gone through heavy armor again, took out the ammo, gone through. So, imagine that in an important room, and you can see why well, that's going to scale really well as the damage increases. It's completely removed one of the AIs, and... A lot of it's, um, vital stuff. Wait, no, is it just about Mr. Mainframe? Okay, that's really annoying, but it's removed everything else there. Drastically increased its size, messed with the Tetris a bit, and now back to pure explosive. Only two mil, that's actually surprisingly low. Oh, <laughs> though, uh, very two mil was enough. According to the stats, in fact I'll look at the stats in a second, they should have done more than that, but of course that doesn't factor in armor penetration. Whoa. <laughs> it's amazing. That's only two million, but that is kind of glorious. Need to try it. Just need to try it with something with a bit more armor, I guess, see if it's ever going to be viable at this stupid size. So apparently it's capable of six million damage. That's what it's actually reading out at. But again, that doesn't factor in armor value. Once again, two mil. <laughs> oh my god. That was a bulwark. I love testing on the bulwark. I think it's my favorite thing to test on. Oh, that is wonderful. Maybe it's just capping out at a certain explosion radius. Um. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, yeah, that's great. I think it needs to um, detonate a little bit earlier, though. I've got it set... Re I think it's set to 7 meters penetration, and it does something like 3 million kinetic damage, so it is getting there. I'm going to lessen that a little bit and do one more test. Damn, that is fantastic. And that's a bit too early. Ooh. I love how much it throws the enemy around. Yeah, it looks like it could just be the explosion radius. It says 100 meters on the actual thing, but I don't know if there's a secret cap or anything, because a lot of the time from the depths is of, like, secret caps on um, different things. That is phenomenal, though. I think we'll just keep it that. Um, we could make it bigger, but I actually want this to be a, a 
it's not going to be usable all that much in like a proper sense. But I want it to be a true craft. I want it to have some side weapons and everything else. So I'll start building that now. Probably not going to finish it this episode because it's going to be big. But yeah. Whoa. That did not go anywhere near far enough, but uh, I saw those fragments going out the other side. Need to redo that test and uh, reset the depth. Oh, wow. So that just went... Yet yeah, those fragments are now strong enough just to go through the entire craft. This is a horrifying weapon. Really oversized. Again, it'll be useless in the campaign because it's reload time, but... Wow. Okay, this time actually detonated inside. It's already moved all the armor, so it looks like it's on the outside, but it's not, as you can probably tell now. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, clearly that's fantastic. I'm actually tempted to, uh, rather than having it penetrate like that, maybe just detonate on the outside. And that time it was um, a timer rather than how many layers it goes through. That way it's a bit more reliable in my opinion. But, whoa. But we could have it though, like I was about to say before we got distracted, I was just looking at the damage. Is it hit the outside and then have a cone forwards, basically going straight through a large area directly in front of it. So that might do better, funnily enough. But then if it misses the detonation, uh Let's see. One more test with frag, then probably back to explosive, then actually building the craft so it doesn't look like, just look like a floating tower of death. I can't talk today. My head hurts. Still maybe a bit too extreme, but as you narrow the spread, it actually weakens the fragments. Yeah, in this case, it didn't quite go all the way through. Did it? Did it actually? It may have. No explosions, though, so I think it missed like all the ammo stores and everything, but these went... Okay, let's try and find one which hit a bit more. Oh, it's hard to tell. Stop moving. I mean, clearly some of them went all the way through. There's damage being done there, and that... Oh, but it could have just went along the outside like this. Ah, uh, yeah, so I do think some of them were stopped. They stopped going down through the bottom over here, so that's because they've been weakened. But, I mean, that's a lot of armor it's gone through, and if it hit anything important, that would have been just game over for this craft. If it was a bit more condensed, the bulwark really isn't, that would have been lethal. Still think I'm going to stick with explosives, but there's a lot of potential here for just insanity. I like insanity. Trying to make it look intimidating. Honestly, I think I'm only succeeding in making it look silly. Though, to be fair, that could be advantageous. You don't expect a silly thing to suddenly detonate half of your ship at a long range. Ah, oh, look at that silly thing. Oh, where did our butt go? They will say. Oh, how they will say it. Oh, how my mind is fading into the ether as I'm trying to focus. I should just stop talking. Small seating area here, plenty of space for engines or whatever just behind me. I'm going to have the top kind of um, go over everything else, since I want a structure on the top. Not sure what, but something. Then we're going to have some side weapons, maybe smaller cram cannons or advanced cannons, something like that along the sides as well. The idea being, although it does have the Doom Cram taking up almost all of its space, after it fires it, it still needs to be able to finish off the target. It's not going to always get a one-shot kill, as we've seen. Very large targets will survive that attack, if it even hits. God, it looks weird. Lights are blue. Enemy appears. Lights are red. And back to blue. Literally severed the front of it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot to add more ammo barrels. Darn it. I wanted to test out the little crams that I just put in. Uh, resource, ammo barrel. Sure, let's just do this. Yeah, one of the engines I've also placed wrong. Uh, <laughs> I'll fix that eventually. Tiny little inertial explosives. Actually, not too bad. 
They reloaded out of sequence then because of the whole lack of ammo thing. I mean, these are super cheap little mini crams just to put on the bottom because I thought it would look cool. Yeah, they get the job done. Minor damage. Sure. Really, though, advanced cannons, missiles, stuff like that would go really well on this craft pretty easily. Of course, I now gave it some propulsion, so it moves. An okay speed, actually, like 70... No, above 20? Oh, moves like faster than I expected. I am coming to the end of uh, this recording now, and honestly, we're not too far of finishing this. I'll definitely be able to finish it in one more episode. And um, with that, I want to ask you a few questions. So, what type of weapon should this thing have? I'd love to know in the comments. And, should I split the man weapon into two? I am going to look into if there is any hidden limitations. It does seem like we may have gone over something and we're not really getting the most out of it. So what we could do is split the man gun into two. It would not be difficult at all uh, with how I've built it. So we could have two barrels firing two shells. Um, definitely set them to different AIs. That way they'll fire at different parts of the enemy when they both fire and potentially just devastate everything but for now we are sticking with the single doom cram we have the smaller crams at the bottom and yeah like i said need other weapons missiles advanced cannons perhaps or just stick with pure cram and only use maybe missiles for defense to take out other missiles just need to do the sides now and armor at the bottom kind of make it look like a bit of a spire then we are done actually we're happy with this thing it's bloody weird also what are we putting on the top maybe a castle i don't know or Maybe the AI stuff? We could have all the AI stuff up here all nice and well protected. In its own separate little section. This may shock some of you, but I have no idea what I'm currently doing. Though I am starting to actually like how this thing's turning out. Um, I really didn't think I would, but... Yeah, it kind of makes me think of the... It looks like a bad version of the... I want to call it Extinction, which is a faction ship. Just... Far worse, but Lathrixian. Probably should add some more armor to this than what I'm actually going to, but too bad. They're only small cram cannons, I don't really deserve that much protection, honestly, they're so cheap and almost useless. They're mostly there just so I can have an, an excuse to, ha to add more armor, so all of this is just a chunk of armor with the two cram can well, two sides of cram cannons crammed in there. Eh, uh, sure, just leave it like that for now. Ooh, we could have lights down the centre, actually. They look quite nice. And I think they're in range, so they should be affected by everything. Because I think the um, the control block I set up should be just the, the entire ship. Lovely. Blue is good for you. Red is dead. <laughs> well, that's what two five million damage shells will do. <laughs> Need to stagger them next time. So, obviously what I've done is just copy and paste the bottom to the top, because I just wanted to see what happened with two of the shells. Now I've set them to different mainframes, I'm not going to delay them, very easy to do, I'm not going to do that. I want them both to fire at the same time, but hopefully at different locations this time. <laughs> wow. Yep, that's, that's two five million damage shells, alright. We made one ship into three. So with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. My head is absolutely killing me. I don't know if I'm going to leave um, the copy and pasted section. I kind of like it. Gotta be honest, it looks really dumb. And I like that. But these have been insanely fun. They're not real that practical. Uh, maybe if you scale it down a bit and have all the side weapons. But I will be finishing off this build in the next video. So any suggestions, very welcome for the name, for anything else. It is just... A really fun build. I have enjoyed it immensely. Though now, 
really need to get some sleep. So, if you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out with me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Now I nap, to feel better. Look at his happy little face. Kind of looks like a gaming console gone wrong. The Lathbox.